Hi everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Now, I want to show you a segmentation technique uh, inside of uh, Power BI here. And I, I just want to talk through how, how you do it, but then also the considerations that you need when you're using it across your entire report. And some, some of you who might have used any type of dynamic grouping or dynamic segmentation might not have picked this up. So <clears throat> the trick here, right, is and this and this is this is a, a way to bring additional insights to your your data that you may not have even dreamt of uh, in the past. Where say you, say you have some some raw data. So in this particular example, this by the way, this was actually from uh, one of the Power BI challenges that we have through Enterprise DNA. And so just as a bit of background, what we are looking at here is the effectiveness of our um, marketing on our customers, right? And so <clears throat> what I decided to do was, okay, I've got every single customer and I've got their results, uh, et cetera. But I wanted to be able to break it out and say, okay, well, how are my top 30 customers going? How are my mid-tier customers going? And how are my bottom-tier customers going, right? Based on where they've ranked, based on sales, okay? So, you know, and, and this is a this is a, a, a totally legitimate um, piece of analysis that, um, you know, ordinarily might not be inside your uh, data, right? You, you don't have this breakdown in your data in most cases, but you can create it inside of Power BI. And the great thing about Power BI is that it, it can be totally dynamic. So the top 30 customers will be different for a different time frame that I select, right? Uh, and the, the, this, the, the way we've done the calculation here, it will update based on, based on, that, um, based on that selection, okay? But, but the key here is I'm, I'm gonna show you the technique, but then the considerations around how do you, say I wanted to just look at my top 30 customers like this and I'm gonna select it. Well, how do I make sure that every single metric changes for that segment, right? Because not only do we have, um, not only does it make sense in say this visualization here, but also in the visualization here, what about all of these other um, uh, cards, right? How do we how do we make sure that this uh, that this particular selection flows onto every single insight? Because you've got to remember, like when we use this dynamic grouping technique, we use a secondary table. Uh, this and this this particular table here, it has no connection to the rest of our model. It's not part of our data model, right? And so we need to figure out well, how can we connect it into calculations that we might ordinarily be doing here, like sales or transactions, uh, and so on and so forth, okay? So let's just quickly go over the technique. So this is the this is really the dynamic grouping DAX formula um, pattern uh, you, that, that you might wanna use, um, you, you can use uh, in, in many different ways, right? And so what I've done in this particular case is I created the secondary table, which I've talked about in the past, um, but it's always good to do a review, right? And so what I've done is I've said, okay, my top 30 clients are my zero to 30, mid tier 30 to 100, bottom tier 100 to all my customers. So this is just an arbitrary number, right? And so I've got my three groups here, right? Okay. Now, the first thing I did was I created my sales by by client group, right? I created one formula for this. Okay, so let's just go over this formula just uh, just a little, just briefly, um, just as a bit of a recap around how this actually works. Okay, so what um, what we've done here is we've said, okay, let's we want to calculate up our total sales, but now we want to make sure that we can group them based on this new particular table that we've created, right? So this secondary table, it's sitting to the side, but we can integrate it into our calculations or we can manipulate our calculations if we integrate it into the formula, okay? And this is what this part of the filter part of the um, this grouping technique formula does, okay? So, so remember, with calculate, we change the context of the calculation. How we change the context of the calculation? Well, we want to iterate through Filter is an iterator, it enables us to iterate through a table. In this particular case, we're iterating through, iterating through a list of customers. So we're gonna iterate through every single customer. And for every single customer, we're gonna, we're gonna work out, okay, what is their sales ranking? And um, we're gonna iterate through that client's group table, comparing the ranking to, if, is it greater than or less than the min and the max values at each of those different rows in the client groups table. So there's quite a bit of logic there, right? For every single customer, we're then going to iterate through every single row in the client's group table, compare if the sales ranking is between any of those min or max numbers, it will always be between one, one of them. Um, and then when it evaluates to true, then we're going to calculate up sales for that particular segment, right? Okay. 
And so that's how we can filter. So let's have a look at this, this visualization here, right? We can filter this particular visualization by this, if you look over here, remember this client's group table is a secondary table. It doesn't, there's no relationship to anything else in our model, but we can now filter this particular formula now, we can filter sales by something which has no relationship to our model because we've inserted it into the right formula pattern that enables us to, to create the filtering within the formula itself, okay? And then if we come down here, you'll see that uh, once again, we have used this particular sales by client group in this um, visualization and we have also filtered it by there. We've got all these other things in here that, because I think it's, the, it's in the tooltips. So you see the tooltips down here. So say for instance, we wanna highlight over this, we're getting details about the, in the you know, details about the results, right? <clears throat> Probably I could have um, uh, improved this title a little bit, but, but anyway. Okay, so what are the other considerations, okay? Now, if you are not um, uh, smart about this technique, what will happen is that, okay, yes, you might have a value here, um, which is filtered by these selections, which is fine, but if you don't update, say, your individual metrics as well, What's going to happen? What could happen is that these might not update, and then you might not be getting um, or seeing in your report what specific metric you're selecting here. So, what you have to do if you want to um, be able to filter across your entire report for this particular insight is you need to go and redo all of the initial calculations you've maybe created, some of your core calculations, I like to call them, like your really simple calculations, like total transactions and total products sold and total customers, right? And so what I have done here is, um, check this out, check this out. We use a very similar technique. Well, basically we use exactly the same te technique. We, we what, what I did was I copied and pasted that original formula and all I did was I changed this part of it. I inserted the original core calculation into that part of it. But now this is going to be able to be filtered by the slicer here. Remember this slicer is, is just purely coming from that secondary table that we created. Then the same, I did the same here for products sold and I did the same for customers, right? So if I click on this one, you'll see exactly the same technique. Um, but now I've just inserted a different measure after calculate. So we're still counting up total sales, total customers, sorry, but we're, again, we're making sure that we can filter by this particular column in our secondary table. Okay, so that's that's just one of the key things that I think you can get tripped up uh, with the with utilizing this technique. You might think, oh, I'll just, I'll just create one formula and then everything will flow from that. Well, if you then wanna insert this column into a slicer, well, then you need to make sure that every single calculation shown in your report can be uh, filtered by this particular slicer. And if you just used, say, this original core measure, total transactions here, you know, this really simple measure, it's, it's, it's not going to um, understand that some context is coming from this selection, right? And so that's why you need to make sure that you're covering all of your formulas um, in, uh, well, embedding the, the, the pattern in all of your, um, across all of your formulas and all of the things that you're showcasing in your report. If you do it well, though, it's very compelling. It's seriously compelling, right? Because this data, say these 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 segments or these groups, they probably didn't even exist in your original data, and you've you've literally made them up. You've gone and calculated up dynamically sales, you know, in a particular time selection. Then you're ranking your customers based on those sales, and then you're dynamically diving into a segment of those customers. So it's a pretty, it, you know, it is a really powerful technique if you can bring it all together and then visualize it well, right? And so, um. I think that's all I'm going to cover in terms of the technique. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. If you didn't know it already, you can actually access this particular report where you can actually um, play around with it within um, the showcase, so Enterprise DNA Showcase. So this is actually one of my submissions into um, the, uh, I think, Power BI Challenge 3 we had, um, which, was, which wasn't too long ago, and I've actually um, put my, my showcase up on the uh, showcases page. So you can actually use the live demo, demo and have a play around with it in there. If you actually want to download this particular resource, uh, we make that available for those who have access to our education platform. 
um, usually historically through membership. Um, so you can so you can download in our showcases module there if, if you if you do have membership. Um, but this is this yeah I mean this is this was the one sort of tricky technique that I embedded in this particular report. But it it, it made the insights more more compelling, uh, and and it uh, it actually differentiated my my insights quite a bit compared to other submissions into the challenge because no one sort of thought outside the box in terms of okay well. I, I don't have this data um, initially. I don't have this data in the report. You know, how can I how can I showcase this differently? Like some, like my consumers have probably never seen this sort of break this dynamic sort of segmentation and dynamic breakdown. So I thought, you know, that's a really strong way to look at things. And also, it prioritized our most important customers. We're able to really drill into our, uh, an important subset of our customers, and that you know possibly could drive the bulk of your revenue or profits going forward right so these are the great things that you can that you can do within power bi to break out you know the most high value insights that are going to make the most difference right um, and it was so like historically just so difficult to do that but before we got we sort of were gifted with power bi so okay i'm going to round things off on this one um hopefully you enjoyed it uh, definitely throw the video a like uh, if you did appreciate that as always and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Um, you know, if you're using Power BI, uh, you you will learn so much from our channel. So lots of great stuff coming out um, from myself and and um, a few other content creators, uh, and you know, just a lot of lot of just incredible um, techniques and tips that uh, will will get you using Power BI in a really effective way. Okay, all the very best. Talk to you soon.